Right, it's in. New topic. The reason you're looking at this plastic can here is because it has a lot to do with what's inside of this can. A lot of you probably have a good guess about what's in there. Have a think. It all has, has to do with what's inside here. So, let's have a think about why I'm showing you a tank of a motorbike. I'm going to show you one more other thing. So, if you can hear me over the motorbike, we have an engine that is running. Think about what it's running on. We also have an exhaust. Think about what is coming out of that exhaust and what else it has to do with this topic. All to do with a certain type of oil. from my little um, demonstration out the front of my house and the picture that I put up before this video here I, I hope you guys start to build a picture that this topic is all about a certain type of oil now that oil is crude oil now we're not talking about oil in general like olive oil sunflower oil this is very specific that we must specify that we're talking about crude oil here now crude oil like I um, put in that picture there is very is this very thick black oil and that oil provides us with lots of different fuel sources and the one that I showed you before this video was petrol now petrol we put in our cars we start the engine and off we go okay and it, it provides us with that energy for us to be able to, to move and to transport ourselves and then obviously there's something going on there and what that's going on is combustion which is why I showed you the exhaust of the motorbike as well. If you start thinking about, well, what is actually coming out of the exhaust? What are those gases that you can see sometimes? So it all leads back to crude oil. And we're going to go through that over these next few lessons that I'm going to do. And I'll break them down into different sections. And you'll find out more in the next lesson about what, where do we actually get petrol from? Or diesel, for example, or plain fuel. How does it come from that black, thick mixture of crude oil? Now, some of you may have noticed, if you've driven past petrol stations or you've gone into them with your, your parents, that the price of um, diesel and petrol has dropped quite significantly. Reason being for this is just supply and demand. There, isn't, there has not been a demand for those fuels and the price has therefore dropped for it. So, what we're looking at today is what is crude oil? Now, I've said it's a black, thick substance, you've seen that, but what actually is in there, okay? How do we get petrol, for example, from that substance? Now, crude oil is fundamentally a mixture, okay? It's a mixture. So you should be starting to think now that mixtures, right? Think back to my definition of mixtures. Right, mixtures, okay, they can be easily separated. They, they're made up of two or more different compounds that are not chemically joined together, and they can be separated. What's exactly what you can do with crude oil? We can separate the crude oil out, okay? We can separate it into what we call fractions. So all crude oil is, it is a mixture of something called hydrocarbons. And I'll put the definitions up on the board, they'll pop up every so often. It's a mixture of hydrocarbons. It's a mixture which therefore it can be separated using a certain technique which we'll come to in the next lesson. Now I've used the term hydrocarbons there. Now, my question to you is, what do you think a hydrocarbon is? And pause the video by all means if you want to have a little think about this, but don't think too hard. Hydrocarbons, a mixture of hydrocarbon compounds. Compounds that are called hydrocarbons. What could that compound possibly contain if it's called hydrocarbons? So we're talking about this word here, hydrocarbons. It should be fairly obvious that we've got hydrogen and we've got carbon and that is all hydrocarbons only contain hydrogen and carbon that's all hydrocarbons contain just those two different elements now that's what we're going to focus on today about the hydrocarbons in particular and in specifically something that are called alkanes and we're going to look at how to draw 
um, alkanes in terms of a structural formula. We're going to come up with the general formula for alkanes and we're going to be able to name these alkanes as well. So, that kind of goes into the fact that we've talked about what crude oil is, and I've, so I'll put the definition up on the board, but let's get straight on to these alkanes, okay, so, and what they are, then there's four that you need to know, so, let's get this off the board, and let's draw them out, and there's a nice pattern to them, so, let's start off with the first alkane, the first hydrocarbon alkane, it's simply got one carbon, and it's got four hydrogens. So the first one on here, I'm going to draw a little table out for this. So we've got name on here. We've got the formula. So this is the chemical formula. How many carbons, how many hydrogens. And then we've got the structural formula. The structural formula. I might just shift up to a blue pen for this in a moment. So name, the first one we've got is methane. We've all heard of methane. Methane, so used in, in the gas taps of Bunsen burners, uh, comes out of bottoms, cattle's bottoms, cow's bottoms in particular. It's a greenhouse gas. Um, it is an issue in terms of the, the level of methane rising within the atmosphere. Um, so we have come across that. That, that word before. The formula for this is the first alkane, so we've got one carbon and four hydrogens, CH4, that's our chemical formula. Now how we draw this out, it's a little bit like this, just branched off, one carbon in the middle with four hydrogens around the outside. Now let's get back to structure and bonding. This carbon has got four bonds. It can only have four single bonds. It's got four electrons in its outer shell. Here we are, carbon group four, four electrons in its outer shell. Therefore, it can have four covalent bonds. So we will draw, draw a dot and cross diagram for that later, just to go a bit more into that. So that's our first one. Second one, so we've got methane is our first one. Then we have ethane. Some of you will already start spotting a pattern here. C. 2H6. Let's draw it out. Two carbons. Now three hydrogens around that carbon and three hydrogens around that carbon. C2H6. Next one after that. Can you guess what it's going to end with? What could possibly be the ending of this name? Pro pain. A N E. One carbon, two carbon, three carbons, C3H8. And drawing this out, so it's getting a little bit messy over here. So we have one, two, three carbons, and we've got our three hydrogens on the left hand carbon. Now the central carbon, it's already got a bond to one carbon here, and it's already got one bond to a carbon here. So it's already using two single bonds, so two electrons. Um, from its outer shell, so we've only got space for two hydrogens. So that central carbon there has two hydrogens attached to it. And then the end, on the right hand side, we've got another three. Propane, CH3H8. Last one we need to know is butane. And I'm sure some of you have heard of both propane and butane before also. So butane. This one, C4H10, C4H10. Do make sure when you're writing these out, chaps, that you do make sure that it's subscript in terms of the number for both the carbon and the hydrogen. Subscript, so it's a small number, slightly lower than the actual letter. And that these, these chemical symbols are correct, they're capital letters, okay, for both carbon and hydrogen. Right, for the structural formula for butane, I've kind of run out of a bit of space there. So I'm, all I'm going to do, now don't do this on your notes, you can draw this underneath. All I'm going to do is literally, I'm going to get rid of that hydrogen there. I'm going to add another carbon. And boom. One, two, three, four carbons. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens. So those are our four alkanes. Alkanes. Now, alkanes 
are saturated hydrocarbons. Uh, as in, they couldn't have any more hydrogens around these carbons than what they have. All the bonds are taken up for the carbon. So alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. They only have single bonds. So there are no double bonds anywhere here. You can see these are all single lines. Remember a double bond would be like that, two lines. So they're all single bonds. They're saturated hydrocarbons. You know, I'll put definitions coming up on the board as we go along because I've only got a limited amount of space. So those are our four hydrocarbons, our four alkanes. Those are the ones you need to know. You need to know those first four, be able to name them, you need to know their chemical formulas, and you need to be able to draw the structural formula. Now, it is possible that you might get asked to predict a chemical formula of an alkane that you're not familiar with. Now, this is when it comes down to our general formula, as in there's a formula that relates all these together, that links all these together, with the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens. I'd encourage you just to have a pause and look and see if you can find a general formula. Now, when I'm talking about a general formula, I'll give you a, a bit of a hint. Okay, what we're talking about is this. The general formula is going to be C something, H something. You're going to have to put something here in here. Now, I'll give you a start. C, N. So that means the number of carbons, a general number. So the, that could be 2, 4, 8, 10, 50. How many hydrogens are there in comparison to this here? It's a tricky one, but have a go. Now, I've got one carbon here and I've got four hydrogens. I've got two carbons here, and I've got six hydrogens. Three carbons, eight hydrogens. So, in relation to how many hydrogens I have to the carbons, well this one here, I've got four more, and I've got six more, and I've got, sorry, four more here, five more here, six more here. If I doubled that number, I'd get four. If I doubled the carbon number here, I'd get 6. If I doubled this number here, I would get 8. If I doubled 1, I'd get 2. So let's just go through that. If I double these numbers, I'd have 2, 4, 6, 8. And the number of hydrogens I'd have would be 4, 6, 8, 10. Two more. So in terms of our general formula here, we could say that we've got twice as many carbons plus another 2. So our general formula is 2n plus 2. Twice as many carbons plus another 2. Try it with butane. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 gives us our 10. 2 times 3 is 6, plus another 2 gives us 8. And that's your general formula here. Everything I'm writing on the board, guys, you should be writing down in your notes, okay? That's our general formula. Our general formula for alkanes, for alkanes, really specifying that it's for alkanes, because you're going to come across something called alkenes at another point, E-N-E, -E, alkenes rather than alkanes. So that's your general formula, let's have a practice with that and give you some examples that you could get given um, and asked to calculate. So, let's get this off the board and let's say that I've got a hydrocarbon called uh, decane. I've got a hydrocarbon called decane. Now, I can say to you, okay, decane is C10. Predict the formula. Predict the formula. Using this general equation, and have a go at this, by all means, pause the video and have a go. Using the equation here, how many hydrons is this going to have? 2 times 10 is 20, plus 2 is going to give me 22. So it's going to be C10H22 times 2, and then add another 2 to it. Just be careful how we're, in terms of typing this in your calculator, if you're using calculator, that we, that we make sure we times this by 2 first, and then add the 2 to it. Okay? Otherwise it will definitely go wrong. Um, what we'll get... Is a, is a different number. So if you did 2 times 
n plus 2 would be 2 times 12, which would be 24, and that would be all wrong. So do make sure you're, you're calculating this correctly. Um, so that would be decade. Like I said, it's got an unknown one that's got C15. Uh, okay, what C15, what's the formula? 15 of those, times it by 2, add 2 on, we're going to have 32. Could work it back the other way. So what is my formula if I've got, uh, let's go, 40. Here's my formula for my alkane. I've got 40 of those. Let's work backwards. Take off 2, so that'd be 38, and then divide by 2. So we'd have 19. So it'd be C19, H40. So just some practice examples that we can go through. That formula you need to know. You need to know that formula. So I would encourage you to have a go and practice some examples. I'll see if I can find some to give you in terms of a worksheet too, to go along with this. So we've looked at what is crude oil? What is a hydrocarbon? What is an alkane? We've covered those off. What I'd just like to, to round this up with is looking at what happens to the properties of the alkanes as they get longer? Because this is a very long alkane. This has got 19 carbons in. So in terms of it, it's huge, relatively speaking, compared to our methane. And that changes the properties of that alkane. So we're going to have a quick look at that, and then we're going to finish off with drawing a dot and cross diagram, okay? So we're going to look at four different properties here. We're going to look boiling point, and that's a really important one for the next lesson, when we start to look at how we can separate this mixture of hydrocarbons in our crude oil. So boiling point, volatility, viscosity and flammability. So we'll go through those and we'll say how the properties change and also I'll link on to actually well what are those properties, what do they what do they mean? So first one boiling point. Now again I'll put these definitions up on as a caption because they're going to be too long for this board. Boiling point, this is simply the point in which our substance turns from a liquid to a gas. And the different alkanes, depending on their length, are going to change from a liquid to a gas at different temperatures. Now, in terms of the property here, here okay, what we're going to put is longer chain. The longer the chain, so the longer the alkane chain, what happens to the boiling point? Okay, so if we have a boiling point property, the longer the chain, well, the boiling point up. So it goes up and we'll put increases, increases. So a longer chain has a higher boiling point. The boiling point increases the longer the chain you get. The reason being for this is because you actually, you've got these intermolecular forces between the two um, chains, between the molecules. And the longer the chain, well the more intermolecular forces you have between the chain. Therefore you need more energy, um, for it to break those forces, and therefore the boiling point is higher. Next one. Uh, let's go for viscosity. Okay, viscosity. Now, viscosity is effectively how gloopy and thick a substance is. It's how easily it flows. So something that was very viscous, let's think of a substance, think off your head, what was a viscous substance? Well, in my head I'm thinking honey. Honey is a pretty viscous substance. It doesn't flow that easily. It's thick. Now, a not viscous substance could be water, for example. That's a good one. Viscosity. What happens as the chains get longer? Viscosity, as in how thick a substance is, increases again. So it increases. So we've got boiling point increasing, viscosity increasing. Okay, let's look at the other two. Flammability. Flammability. Now, flammability, I'm going to add another M in there actually. Get it right. Flammability is simply how well something burns. So, how well does it combust? How well does it burn? Um, how cleanly does it burn? Now, what happens as the chains get longer, they actually don't burn as well. Um, so the, the, the terms of how well they burn actually decreases. So we have longer chain, as you can see this is the same all the way through, keeping it simple. As the chains get longer, the flammability decreases. 
So the flammability decreases as the chains get longer. So we've got boiling points increasing as the chains get longer. We've got viscosity increasing as the chains get longer. And we've got flammability decreasing as the chains get longer. The last one I want to go through is volatility. Um, effectively, volatility is the, the substance's ability to turn into a gas. Okay. So looking at these ones here, in terms of length of chain, as the chain gets longer, let's think realistically. The ability for a substance to turn into a gas. Well, look at the boiling point. As the chain gets longer, it increases. So the ability of a longer chain to turn into a gas is going to decrease, so it decreases. So we've got two increasing and two decreasing. Again, I'll put up the caption on the board here, just showing the definitions of each one of these four here. Um, but those properties there, you need to be able to understand and relate back to. The last thing I want to do is looking at dot and cross diagrams for these alkanes. So we're going to pick methane, which is the most obvious one that would come up and you'd be questioned on, and we'll look at a dot and cross diagram. Now, we're looking at covalent bonding. Two non-metals, hydrogen, non-metal. I know it's over there, but it's a non-metal on this table. Sometimes it's in group one, sometimes it sits over here. It's a non-metal. Non-metal and a non-metal, so we've got covalent bonding. We've got sharing of electrons. Therefore, you're thinking, right, I haven't got those square brackets with the charges, because it's not loss and gain. It's sharing. Overlap of shells looking like this. Carbon in the middle. We're going to have one, two, three, four hydrogens around the outside. Let's label them up. Hydrogen, hydrogen. I said to you, carbon's in group four. If it's in group four, it's got four electrons in its outer shell. So we're going to put one in the bond here, another one, another one, and another one. There's my four outer shell electrons of carbon. That's job done. That's why it can only have four single bonds. Now hydrogen, one electron in its outer shell. So carbon's put one electron in. Well then hydrogen's going to put one electron in as well. So we're going to put a dot, a dot for this one, a dot for this one, a dot for this one. And that's your complete here, dot and cross diagram for methane. So that is the CH4 methane. And if we just do a check, in terms of our outer shell, in terms of we know that for a full outer shell we have stability, well a full outer shell for carbon would be eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's stable, it has a full outer shell. Hydrogen, well it only has a first shell, and the first shell the most you can fit is two. One, two. Full shell, it's stable. So that is drawing a dotting cross diagram for your alkanes. Now the next lesson we'll do will be on something called distillation and there's another little, a little um, spin on that distillation as well but I'll we'll do that um, reveal that in the next lesson so have a go um, through some of the questions that I'm going to put on frog for you as well make sure your notes are complete from this video that I've done for you email me if you've got any other questions or you any concerns or you're not sure about anything um, and if not then I will then see you for the next lesson on distillation <laughs>